back to Sunday School. I hope you had a wonderful week. Just a reminder that there are some activities attached below for you to do to reinforce some of today's lesson. I think songs are a wonderful way of teaching and of reminding us of the important lessons that Jesus taught us. So you're going to find another song attached for you to learn. Well, last week, we asked ourselves what would happen, what happened to those who denied or betrayed Jesus. Well, we discovered Peter was forgiven by Jesus. By replying three times to Jesus that he did love him, Peter showed that he was asking for forgiveness for his mistake. I also told you that Peter went on to be known as the leader of the early church. And what he did to spread the gospel, we're going to learn in another Sunday school lesson. Do you remember G Judas? Well, whatever happened to him? His betrayal led directly to the arrest and the death of Christ. But his response was the complete opposite of Peter's. So, let's begin with the time that Judas was chosen by Jesus to be one of his disciples. You might be wondering, why would Jesus, being God and knowing all things, choose his own betrayer? Well, it was to answer a prophecy that was made about 500 to 1,000 years before Jesus was even born. It comes to us from the book of Psalms, and it reads like this. Even my close friend, someone I trusted, one who shared my bread, has turned against me. So Jesus referred to this prophecy during the Last Supper when he revealed to his uh, disciples that one of them was going to betray him. This is what Jesus said. I'm not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. It's to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread and has turned against me. Jesus had to choose Judas in order to fulfill the word of God that had was spoken many years before. So what did Judas do as a disciple? Well, Judas was the treasurer of the group. He was in charge of all of the money. Unfortunately, we also know that he was not a man of good character. The Bible tells us that he was a thief. You may remember the story of Mary, the sister of Lazarus, who anointed Jesus' feet with an expensive oil, an expensive perfume. This made Judas very angry. We find in the book of John, this is what it tells us. One of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a word's a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used, he used to help himself to what was put into it. So Judas was not only a betrayer, but he was a thief. He didn't have very good character, even though he was chosen by Jesus. So often in the Bible, when, you, um, when Judas' name is printed, Following his name, it'll say, the one who is going to betray him. So you see, this was Judas's destiny all along. So this leads us to ask, why did Judas betray Jesus? Well, now that we understand his character a little bit more, we, we see how important money was to him, and that he would deceive and steal to get more. In fact, Judas went to the priests and asked them how much money they would give him to hand Jesus over to him, them. The priest didn't come to Judas first. Matthew tell, the book of Matthew tells us, then one of the 12, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him 30 pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. So whatever happened after he betrayed Jesus? Again, we learn from the book of Matthew. Early in the morning, all of the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and ended his life. Judas recognized that he made a horrible mistake, but he didn't ask for forgiveness. Instead of taking responsibility, he ran away. So what can we learn from Judas's life? Well, Judas was hanging around Jesus not because he loved him or had a heart to serve him, but because of what he could get from being around him. 
So for Judas, it was the opportunity to steal money, and maybe there was more. We also learned that sin will always bring remorse. It's what we do once we've recognized that we've made a mistake. We can be like Peter and ask for forgiveness. You know, forgiveness also includes forgiving ourselves, because without that, we cannot move on with our lives to do the great things that God wants us to do. Well, Judas eventually felt remorse for betraying Jesus, but instead of taking responsibility, he ran away. There's no record in scripture telling us that he repented. He did feel bad, but he never sought forgiveness. So how do you want to live your life? Well, Jesus, Judas had Christ in his life. He followed Jesus for three years. He walked with Jesus. His eyes saw all of the miracles that Jesus performed. He had to have uh, faith. It had to have grown while he was watching Jesus perform all of those miracles. His ears heard Jesus' teachings, like the parables. And his feet followed the greatest example to ever walk on this earth. And yet, it was his heart that led him astray away from what he knew was right. His heart was filled with lies and deception, and that took control over his life. One of Jesus' teachings tells us to guard our hearts. So how do we do that? Well, we do that by doing what is right. We obey God's commandments, and we live a life that is pleasing to him and a life that would honor him. You see, it's not enough just to come to Sunday school every Sunday. The other six days of the week, you need to practice what you've learned and what you've been taught. Every one of us needs to do that. No one wants to be a Judas. Don't turn your back on or betray a trusted friend or relative. We all make mistakes and we all have regrets. But when we ask God for forgiveness, we're able to pick ourselves up and move on. Running away from our mistakes doesn't make us a better person. Don't deny a place for Christ in your life. Love him and serve him, not for what he can and will do for you. Love him and serve him because of who he is. He is the son of God. He died for your sins so that you can have a relationship with God. And I encourage you to live your life for Christ to the fullest and be everything that he wants you to be. So I want to leave you today with what Paul tells us to do about guarding our hearts. Through prayer, we can receive peace from God no matter what situation we might find ourselves in. It's a very good verse for you to memorize. It's a little bit long, and you're going to find it in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let's bow our heads and let's recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we have forgiven those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I look forward to seeing all of you who are able to join us a little bit later on this morning on Google Hangouts. And for those of you who can't join us, I look forward to you meeting up with us again.